Hey everyone, and welcome back to our Python data analytics series. In this episode, we're gonna explain what data is and what it looks like in the context of data analytics, what libraries we're gonna be using, and the idea of data frames and data sets. Before we get started, I wanna do a quick overview of the types of data we're gonna see in this course and that you'll likely see in the future. So there are two main types of data generally, numerical data and categorical data. Numerical data is exactly as it sounds. It is data that is represented by numbers. And generally, numerical data is broken down into two subtypes of numerical data, and that's discrete data and continuous data. Discrete data is data that can only be certain fixed values, whereas continuous data could have an infinite number of values. So what do I mean by this? Let's look at some examples. If we were to say count the number of students in a classroom, for instance, we could only have whole numbers like 1, 5, 10, 15, etc. It wouldn't make sense to have something like 1.47. Therefore, students in a classroom would be discrete data. Another example we could use would be looking at shoe sizes. Shoe sizes are only made in increments of 0.5, like shoe size 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5, etc. Meaning we couldn't have a shoe size of 7.36, for instance. So this is another example of discrete data. If we wanted to look at an example of continuous data, we could actually just look at the height of 50 students in a classroom, for instance. So technically, each student could have any possible number between the normal human range. For example, one student might be 5.139684 feet tall, and another might be 5.8964 feet tall. They could also be 6 foot tall even, but it's still continuous because it, would be, it could be any number along the scale. Another example of continuous data could be, let's say, distance traveled in a race, for instance, as it could be infinitely measured by millimeters, centimeters, meters, kilometers, and so forth. Here's a really good graphic I found showing how discrete and continuous variables look different. So if you see discrete variables on a graph, there can only be points at actual set intervals, whereas with continuous variables, they can be represented as a line because the data could appear at any point in the line, even if it's a ridiculously precise decimal. So now that we've covered the idea of numerical data, let's move on to categorical data. So that's the other type of data, which are basically just categories, typically just represented by words. So for example, if in a data set, every row had either red, green, or blue as a variable, this would be categorical. Or if every row is either labeled, you know, low, medium, high, or let's say short, average, tall, these are also categorical variables. A very simplistic way to think about it is that typically when you see numbers, that's numerical data. And when you see words, that's categorical data. Although it's not always 100% true all the time, that'll generally be the case. So now let's start off by going over what data is in data analytics and what it actually looks like. So data is merely just a collection of information. It can take many different shapes and forms. Many large sets of data you will deal with in data analytics from either Excel files or just general CSV files, which I will go into more detail about later. The idea is that data is usually laid out in a simple table format, which we could call a database table. Let's look at an example. So this table that you see here, which I got from the W3Schools data science section, has a couple of attributes we should take into account. Like any table, it is split into rows and columns. The rows represent each individual entry. The columns represent each individual variable or attribute. So duration is a variable, average pulse is a variable, hour sleep is a variable, etc. Let's assume for the sake of this data that each row represents one person and their corresponding workout variables. So for example, person one worked out for 30 minutes and had an average pulse of 80 and a max pulse of 120. They burned 240 calories during their workout, worked for 10 hours in a day and slept for seven. This is one entry and each individual person has their own data. As a data analyst, this is typically the format you're going to be working with data in. Sometimes you may have to make the tables yourself, but all basic data set tables will have rows, which are the entries, and columns, which are the variables that you're looking at. One question we may ask as a data analyst is, do people who sleep more hours in a day burn more calories during a workout? Or another question could be, do people who work more hours in a day work out for more or less time on average? So now let's do what we're all waiting for and let's start some actual basic coding. So I'm going to go ahead and make an actual code block down here. And the first thing I want to do is just write import pandas as PD. If you look at nearly any Python data analytics program, you're going to probably see this line at the top and I'll explain exactly what it means. Pandas is the most popular and well-known Python library for data analytics. Python by itself doesn't have spectacular capabilities for data analytics. So it often relies on third parties to make tools to make developer lives easier. Pandas integrates seamlessly into Python code and allows us to do all sorts of operations on data. By writing this line, we're importing the pandas library like this into our code, and we're just giving it the alias of PD, meaning that whenever we want to reference a library, we can just use this PD acronym. We've talked about data, so let's look at what a Python interpretation of data may actually look like. Most of the time, we're going to be using data graph from an external source. However, let's quickly make our own data set so we can go over a couple of things. I went ahead and took the time to turn our exercise table into a format that's readable by pandas. So I'm actually going to make a new code block down here. I'm just going to copy and paste it in. 
And it looks like it's kind of a handful here, but I'll explain exactly what this does. So basically all we're doing here with this data is just making one big dictionary that has keys as the column titles like duration, average pulse, etc. And then each value for the corresponding key is all the values within that column in the format of a list. So if you're not super familiar with how like dictionaries or lists work in Python, it won't be a huge deal because this data is just for show as of right now, but it may help to watch my previous Python video on dictionaries and other multi-value data types. So we can use all this data. Let me actually just make a variable here. I'm going to call it just my data and set that equal to all of this dictionary right here, which should be just this above table, like I said. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here, make a new line, go down a little bit, and then I want to call the pandas object. And we're going to make a little data frame here. So I'm just going to type this and I'll explain what it means. So I'm going to do df equals pd dot data frame. And then I'll do data equals my data. So basically all we're doing here is making a new variable, calling it df, which stands for data frame, and then we're setting it equal to a pandas function call. We're accessing pandas by typing pd and then calling the data frame function that pandas has, which will actually build a data frame for us. This function takes in one argument data and we're just passing in the my data variable, which is just this dictionary right up here. And actually, so our uh, program can actually recognize this call, let's actually run this line of code we're importing the library, just so it doesn't get confused. So what actually is a data frame, you're probably wondering. A data frame is just a structured representation of data, in most cases just meaning a table of data. Think of it almost just as a synonym for a data table, and it's how we interact with data in Python. So if we want to actually print out the data frame so we can actually view it in pandas, we can just make a line down here, and we can actually just type the name of the data frame. So we can just type df. In normal Python, you would normally wrap something in a print statement like this. You do like print df like that. However, pandas makes a really nice table for you if you just type the name of the data frame. So if I just delete this print here, do this, and then I run this, it might take a second, you'll see it actually prints out a data table in an actual data table format, which looks identical to the table that we have right up here. But now that we've put in a data frame in pandas, we're actually free to interact with it as we please. One thing to note is that every row is numbered, and you'll notice that the numbering starts at zero and not one. This is because in Python and in pretty much every other programming languages, Lists of data will always start with zero instead of one. So technically the very first row is marked zero, second row is marked one, third row is marked two, and you get the picture. Data frames are super useful because it's how we can actually interact with data in Python. Now that we have it established, there are tons of functions within pandas that we can use to manipulate and analyze this data. We're not gonna dive into all these functions just yet, but one easy one that can be helpful is the head function, which just prints out the first five lines in a data set. It's nice because sometimes you may just wanna check a small portion of the data set and not have to print out you know, the entire thing. To use this function, or method as it's technically called, we would do it just like any other object method in Python. To call object methods, we just need to use a dot operator after whatever object it is we're interacting with, which is just the period on the keyboard, and then type the method name with parentheses and pass in any arguments if necessary. So what I mean by that is to call the head function, we would simply type just dot head right here. And then if we were to run this, like this, you'll see that it only prints off the first five rows of data. And if I actually want to specify the number of rows to be displayed, I can actually type that number within the head here. So if I wanted to, you know, the first six rows, I could write six, and then to print out the first six, I could do, let's say 10 rows, and it would do the first 10 rows, and basically could do any number that you want in here, even maybe say like two, for instance. And if you try and do any number that's actually greater than the number of rows in the data frame, it'll just max out at whatever number it ends on. So if I try and say, I want to show like the first 15 rows or something, it'll only show 10 rows because we only actually have 10 rows in our data frame. So hopefully now you should know that a data frame is just a representation of data, and it's how we interact with data in Python. In our example, however, we're simply making our own data set, when in reality, you're typically going to be loading data into your program from somewhere else. So how do we do this? Let me show you. So first, we need to find a data set that we can actually interact with, or that we want to interact with. One of the best sources for data sets is Kaggle.com. It has thousands of completely free data sets for you to download and interact with. This is where I get most of my data from when I'm working with Python code for personal projects or whatever else. For this tutorial, I found a data set that ranks all the countries in the world based on the AI Global Index, which is just a benchmark on nations' levels of investment, innovation, and implementation of AI. I'll provide a link to it in the description of the video, as well as a link to just Kaggle.com in general, so you can kind of explore it and look around a little bit. So feel free to work with your own data set if you want to, but it may help to use this data set if you're wanting to follow along with the tutorial. If you're doing it with your own data set, just make sure it is a .csv file. .csv files stand for comma-separated values, and it just means that it's a set of data that has each variable split up by commas. Many data sets we're going to be dealing with in data analytics will have this file extension. Once you have the data set downloaded onto your computer, we can continue. So now we need to figure out how to load this data set into our code and turn it into a data frame like we have here with this data set. 
There's a couple of ways we can do this in Colab. Let's go through probably the simplest way. The first thing we want to do is go to the top of our code here where we're importing pandas. I'm going to make a new line. I'm going to write from Google. Oops. All right, from Google.colab import files. This is a library from Google Colab itself that helps you to upload files to your code. The next thing you want to do is make a new line and just write import IO, which imports the IO module, which just means input output. Then we'll run this code again so we can import these new libraries. Now let's go ahead and actually just delete this code block here. So because we're going to be actually using a real data set instead of fake data, so let's just go ahead and get rid of it. So now what we're going to do is just go ahead and make a new code block here and we're going to call a new variable, let's say data file. And then we're going to set it equal to files.upload. So files is the library up here that we imported from Colab and calling the upload method on it will prompt us to select a file from our computer to download and then it'll be stored in this data file variable. If we actually run it, it'll prompt me for a file from my file explorer, which I can then click and then look in my files and then I will go ahead and upload it right here. And then once it's uploaded, you should get this successful message here. And this data set by default is named aiindexdb.csv. The only issue here is that because of the way Google Colab uploads these files, it's not readily available as a data frame just yet. We need to add one more line of code that will turn it into a data frame and allow us to interact with it. So to do this, let's make a new data frame, but we're going to use a different pandas function this time. So I'll make a new variable. I'm actually going to, yeah, I'll make it in the same block here. I'll call it data set and I'm going to set it equal to pd.read underscore CSV and have parentheses like this. So read CSV is a super common function in pandas, and it's the primary way of making a data frame out of an already existing CSV file. So normally when using the dot read CSV function, we can just pass in the name of whatever file we want. So for instance, like our file is named um, AI underscore index underscore DB dot CSV. So normally we could just do it like something like that. However, because Colab uploads files into an actual file object, we would need an extra step inside of just the name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna copy and paste this line here instead of our read CSV parentheses. So you don't really need to know exactly what io.bytesio function does. Just know that we need this line to make our CSV file readable to pandas. So just copy and paste this for now and make sure you have the name of the file, which is data file, on the outside of the square brackets and then inside you have the actual string name of the file. So now after writing these lines, we should have our data set fully loaded into our code. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just run this right here and then I'll just go ahead and reselect our data set. So I showed you just a minute ago how we can actually make a data frame and kind of interact with it just by printing it out and printing out the head function and just kind of seeing what it looks like. And this read CSV function from pandas is actually just turning our file into a data frame. So what I'm actually going to do to test it out is go ahead and just make a new code block here. And then I'll make underneath this one because I don't want to run this block and I have to re-upload the CSV file every single time I want to run the code and test something. So in this new block, I'm just going to go ahead and write data set like this. Assuming you execute the blocks in order, the blocks at the bottom will know every variable mentioned in the blocks above it. So this block will know that by typing the data set, we're referencing the data set variable we made at the bottom of the first block. So now let's actually see what our data set looks like. So if we go ahead and run this block of code, you'll see that it now prints out our new AI data set as a data frame in a very similar format to how we saw our exercise data frame being printed out as well. If we wanted to read this, you know, this first row, for example, we will say the United States has a talent score of 100, infrastructure score of 94.02, development score of 100, total score of 100, and it is in the high income group, just to name a few of the variables. So one thing you'll notice here is that there's actually 62 total entries, but it's only showing a couple of them and it's not showing the whole thing, hence these, you know, these dots here in this row to basically show all the overflow. There's actually a really unique feature that Colab has. If you click this little enhanced little magic wand button here at the bottom left, if you click it, it actually kind of turns your table into more like an Excel table looking format, which is kind of interesting to see. But just so we can go back to our default one, let's go ahead and just run this again so we get the normal looking table in Colab. So I mentioned it before, but if you just print out the data set and don't specify how many lines you want, it'll just print out the first five and last five lines of the data set. Like I said, with the overflow here. Just like we used before, we can actually use the head function on this data frame to specify how many lines we actually want. So if we just run it by itself, it'll print out five lines. So if you do something like this, like head, run it out, it'll print off the first five lines. If we want to say print out the first three lines, we can actually specify in the arguments and say three right here like that. Or let's just say, you know, we want the first 10 lines. We can just push in 10 right here. Alternatively, just as we have a head function to print out the top of the data set, we could also use the tail function to print out the bottom of the data set. So it does the same thing as head, but in reverse. So if I just called, uh, let's just say data set 
dot tail like this, and I ran it, it would print off the last five entries in the table by default. And if I did, you know, tail and I put it in 10 for the parentheses here as the argument, and I ran it, it would print off the last 10. So it's the exact same concept as head, but just reverse. So you have head showing the top and then tail showing the bottom, basically. Now we have our data set ready to go for our code. We're gonna cut this episode here before it starts getting too long and save the next steps for the next episode. In this episode, you learned what a data frame is, how to take a data set from online, upload it into Google Colab, and use the read CSV function from Pandas to turn a data set into a data frame. In the next episode, we'll start to get into the actual exploration of the data. So I'll see you in the next one.